All right. I have the top of the hour, so let's begin. Uh, let me welcome everybody. Welcome to the Future Trends Forum. I'm delighted to see so many of you here today. And I'm really looking forward to our conversation. My name is Brian Alexander. I'm the forum's creator. I'm the organizer. I'm the chief cat herder. And I'm your guide to the next hour of conversation. This is the biggest assemblage of people that we've had on the Future Trends Forum so far. There are six wonderful people who are all involved with the MTech MOOC project. And that has been a fascinating online class helping people think more effectively and learn more about emerging technology for teaching and learning. So that includes Robin Sullivan, Cherie Van Patten, uh, Jessica Kruger, Gina Sipley, Rachel Rigolino, and Jennifer Herman. Uh, they've also done research on this and published a book, uh, published a scholarly chapter in a recent book about it. So I'm going to bring them all up one by one so that you can say hello to them, and then we can start our conversation. So to begin with, we're going to bring up Robin Sullivan, who is the main leader of this group, and she'll be the one to say hello. Hello, Robin. Hi, Brian. Thank you for having us here. Oh, it's great to see you. Where are you today? Uh, I'm here from Buffalo, New York. Ah, nice and sunny day. Well, and nobody appreciates sun like people from upper uh, the upper Northeast. Mm -hmm. Oh, glad to hear it. Um, well, listen, we I I'm so glad you could make it, and I'm so excited to uh, learn more about MTech MOOC. I, I was wondering if you could introduce yourself to our, our audience, and to do so by telling us what are you going to be working on for the next year? What are the big ideas or the big projects that are going to be top of mind for you? Okay, sure. Um, so um, my name is Robin Sullivan, but if you need to find me at the University of Buffalo's directory, look me up as Roberta. Um, I am a teaching and learning strategist and instructional designer in our UB libraries. And um, also the project director of the MTech MOOC project. So the um, thing that I think is going to keep myself and many other members of the team very busy in the next coming year is um, we are um, seeking additional partners for MTech and um, continually trying to expand the number of people that we can benefit and the, um, the quality of how that project goes forward. What's the uh, best way people who are curious about partnering with you, what's the best way for them to find you? Um, probably the best way, um, I will put my um, email address in the chat. That's probably the best way, but I am also on many other social media platforms, Facebook's um, LinkedIn and Twitter is maybe the least often, but I'm there as well. Very good, excellent, excellent. Well, thank you for, uh, uh, for saying that, for sharing that, and uh, thank you for all this work. But hang on for a second. I want to bring up some of your colleagues as well so they can join us and uh, and we can learn a bit more from all of them. Uh, let's see. So let me see if I can bring uh, Cherie Van Putten, which for me is the, is the Dutch name and the best New York name I could think of today. Hello, Cherie. Hi, how are you doing today? Good. How are you? And, and where are you today? I am in Binghamton, New York, and it is not sunny here. So it is a typical Binghamton day. Indeed, indeed. I, I remember uh, driving across uh, upstate New York one year uh, during the winter, and it was beautifully clear. I think it started off in Ohio. And I got 10 minutes out of Binghamton, and immediately it was like this wall of snow came. And I got 10 minutes past Binghamton, it stopped. It was clear. Like you have a special cloud. We tend to be, we tend to be a little cloudy. We tend to not get the um, the snow from the Finger Lakes, and we tend to not get no nor'easters. But I think we got the most snow in New York of any city this year. That's me. So well, yeah, enjoy May. <laughs> it's sort of like March right now, but <laughs> well, it's better than February. Um, Sherry, uh, tell us what, what are you going to be working on for the next year? Well, I'm going to be working with Robin on the MOOC and trying to uh, get more funding for it and improve it and bring it to a larger audience. I'm also doing a project where I'd like to create an online course for faculty on inclusivity, inclusivity in their classrooms. Ooh. So not diversity training, but actually looking at um, inclusivity from a higher education standpoint where we're gonna have them re maybe read articles, do a little of their own digging for articles, but make it their own and put more of a higher education stamp on on inclusivity. Oh, great. Would you do this through uh, through SUNY or through 
uh, Binghamton or through some other? Right now we're doing it through Binghamton, but one of the reasons I brought it up was maybe there'd be somebody interested in it that would like to talk about it more and maybe we could do it on a, a much larger scale and you know make it so that any organization could could use it to fit their faculty. You, know, you didn't even finish answering the question and already someone in the chat volunteered to help. Okay, and I had a feeling it would be something that people would be interested in. <laughs> Well, check out Doc Waters. That's enthusiasm okay. right there. Okay. That sounds excellent. Um, Great. And welcome. welcome. And I'll put my email in the chat as well. So if anyone gets wants to get in touch with me regarding that, we can we can chat more on email. Very good. Well, let me bring up a third member of your esteemed crew. Uh, let me bring up uh, Professor uh, Jessica Kruger. Let's see if we can add her to the stage as well. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. Good to see you. Great to see you too. Happy to be here along with my fantastic colleagues. Well, I was going to say your femtech colleagues. Where, uh, where are you coming from today? Sunny Buffalo, New York. Oh. Uh, so happy to have that sunshine, as Robin mentioned. Mm -hmm. I know there's a theme. I know there's a theme. Oh, good to see you. Jessica, what are you going to be working on for the next year? So I am so happy to be part of the MTech MOOC team, but I recently got a promotion in my job and I am the Director of Teaching Innovation and Excellence in the School of Public Health and Health Professions within nice. UD. So I get to work with five different departments um, and creating some strategic plans around moving forward some innovative um, teaching practices and technology. And so uh, I love getting able, being able to um, work on a variety of, of topics, um, especially around um, ways to create inclusive classrooms, but my focus is very much in caring and how can mm -hmm. we create a caring environment and the return on investment for caring for our students. So, so that's where my focus will be. Well, terrific. And uh, congratulations on your new role. And uh, I expect your students, faculty, and staff will benefit greatly by it. Um, well, we have three more people, but I, I want to make sure that you can. That we can uh, well, that's a New York sound right there. Um, I, I want to make sure that we get uh, a chance to meet with you three first, and then we'll start switching out and bringing up more more folks. Uh, one, let me just give you one introductory question. Uh, my understanding of the M Tech MOOC is that it is a MOOC that you all have helped create. Uh, that many people have participated in, uh, that the SUNY system helps support, and that it's all about students learning about uh, emerging technology and how it can impact teaching and learning. That's my like, kindergarten level understanding. What am I missing? What should we all know about besides that? I think um, a couple of critical pieces is that um, it's equally targeted to the needs of faculty so that they can become adept at using emerging technologies to engage their students in learning. And uh, it's also an extremely broad group that anybody in the world who has an interest to improve their digital literacy and their lifelong learning habits and their knowledge about how to use technology tools in their everyday life, um, it's also well suited for them. So it's pretty broadly focused. Um, I think the other um, piece that makes uh, MTech unique is that it um, it has two parts. One is a Coursera-based MOOC that is a structured course, um, but we try to break the Coursera stereotype, and it is a connectivist and a constructivist-based MOOC. Um, the other thing is that there's a, a wiki that is crowdsourced that supports the learning assignments and activities that um, is everybody, I encourage you please to visit the wiki and add any of the tools or resources or tutorials that we don't have in there that should be there. Just a quick note about that. Uh, if you look on the bottom left of your screen, you'll see two yellow or tan colored blobs. Um, and uh, one of them is for MTech MOOC. If you click that, that'll take you straight to the wiki. Um, the second one will take you to the book that uh, a bunch of these women have co-authored and written a chapter into um, about assessment in this MOOC as well. So you can just click those uh, if you'd like to learn more. Thank you, Robin. It, it sounds a bit like the uh, DS-106 um, digital storytelling MOOC in that it's more constructivist and also for uh, all kinds of people, not just current students. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
very, there's a number of similarities. Cool. Very good. Uh, friends, if you're new to the Future Trends Forum, uh, my job here is not to be uh, the chief interrogator. Uh, my job instead is to be the MC. So I'm here for your questions and your comments. Uh, so this is the great time to put those up. Uh, in fact, I have a cat who will assist me at all points. So if you need assistance, there's that. Uh, we have a quick question from a uh, longtime uh, participant, Mathieu Bjord, up in uh, Quebec. Uh, and he asks this question about some of your purposes. Uh, continuous funding for MOOCs sounds like it's still a problem. How can we make them sustainable while remaining affordable for the learners? That's the darn good question of the day. <laughs> um, and I think one that we are continually trying to um, come up with ideas on how to address that. Um, and that's, I think, a reason why I mentioned um, in the very beginning that we are looking for partnerships um, to uh, figure out ways that we can keep it sustained. Um, we have a survey that we are actually asking some of the other MOOC providers, some of the other um, institutions that provide teaching-based MOOCs, what are their strategies? So we might be able to learn from them as well. Um, but we do want to provide this training for the learners at um, as little cost as possible. And it is, our course is also very unique in that you could take the entire thing for free. We don't lock you out of the assignments. You can complete the course. Um, if you are not part of one of the Coursera or the um, campus agreements, then there is a small fee if you want that badge and certificate at the end. But otherwise it's free and we wanna keep it that way. And we've seen the benefits on um, people from across the globe who have enrolled and participated. And that is what makes it all worthwhile, I think. That's a good answer. Uh, just one quick question is how is it supported now? Is this uh, cemented by the uh, system or by a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of muscles and um, volunteer effort and goodwill and good people um, that are, we are looking for more grant funding, hoping to hear back this month on another small grant. And um, we're looking to partner for um, writing some much bigger grants that will bring us more into the into the sustainable future. Very good. Good answer. And uh, Mathieu, as always, a good question. Uh, if you're new to the forum, that's a perfect example of the text question. Um, and now let me give you an example of the video question. Let me bring up Elliot Jordan, uh, developer. And uh, let's see, this is the largest number of people we've had in a shooting big profile, by the way. So this is the kind of milestone. Uh, hello, Elliot. Hello, how are you? Good, nice to see you. Good to see you all. What can I tell you? <laughs> what's, your, what's your question or what's your comment for, the, for our team? Uh, actually, I have a game development for learning class in process right now, oh. in progress, and just uh, uh, would love to know your thoughts on that, uh, if you're going to touch on that at all. And um, that would be basically uh, my primary question, if, if there are any thoughts out there on that. And just gamified learning as a trend and whatever you can bring to that point. Well, go ahead, ladies. I think there's, uh, I think there was just an email that was put out about some of this stuff uh, from our hosts today, which is great. Um, and you know, I, I think you'll find a lot of resources with on the M Tech MOOC that you could utilize within your class. So I think the best part about this is really not only the process of going through the MOOC, but always having that wiki to refer to. I love this tool because whenever I'm thinking about creating or changing some assessments, I always check the wiki to find out some new tools. And those tools can be used in a variety of, of different ways. I bet we can all name off our top five tools that we use on in every course. But I bet you might not go past that. And so I encourage people who are teaching or thinking of, of new strategies to spice up their courses to check out that wiki and learn something new. I try to learn a new tool every month. I might not use that tool for years, but at least I can refer other faculty to it when they come up with an idea or an innovative course like yours to begin to try some of these and use them in creative ways. Great answer, Jessica. 
Well, Robin, Sherry, would you like to add more? Uh, um, yeah, I just want to, um, you know, let you know, Elliot, that um, the wiki is something that everybody is welcome to contribute to. And so the tools and the resources that are on the wiki right now, I think we have about 500 different tools and resources. Um, for one, you can narrow those resources down just by the ones that attach to the gamification topic. There's a filter on the on the wiki to do that. And if the game that you end up developing has any portion of it that is a freely available resource, please go to the wiki, hit the contribute button, and add your add your game to the wiki for others. Um, would love to see it there. Great, thank you. I have a quick question about um, about the wiki, which is: Does it persist uh, from iteration uh, to iteration of M technique? or do you restart it each time you offer the class? No, the wiki stays there and we do go in and we try to update it periodically, but it can be a little unwieldy because it's sort of large. Um, if you have something to add to the wiki, you can go ahead and put it in there and we do moderate it. So like if mm -hmm. you went in and you knew there was a big change about a particular tool and you went in and updated it, we do look at it first before we post it. And, and it's not just, you know, the three of us, there's a, there's a group of people that will do it. But it's usually just Robin. Well, I always love the, uh, the term wiki gardeners. Uh, and, uh, I'm very fond of that. Thank you. Thank you. And Elliot, uh, that's a great question. If you have uh, uh, anything you want to share about your, uh, your game design class in progress, throw it into the chat or uh, send it to me. I'd be glad to uh, spread it over. Thank you very much. I will do that. You're welcome. Welcome. So again, if you're if you're new to the forum, that's an example of a video question. Um, so all you have to do is just press the raised hand button and you can join us up on stage. And as you can see, we are all pretty friendly, I think, pretty friendly so far. And we have more questions coming in. So this is one from Todd uh, Rossell. Um, Todd asks, I work for really innovative ed tech. I use institutional at UPenn and UT Knoxville, many law schools and writing programs. Well, academia is so overwhelmed. How do we get introduced? Uh, he's a director at Power Notes. That's the, the name of the other thing. I'll put that question up on stage again so people can see it. Again. What do you think? How can how can the people get introduced if they're a startup like this? Meaning, how can you get introduced to each other um, since we're in such a virtual setting? Is that what you're asking? I think he's asking is how he can get the word out about uh, his products to all of higher education. Get the word out to others about what? Uh, I think that it's uh, that it's a, a good tool. He thinks. Oh. Uh, if, um, you, if you'd like to add more um, to the question, Todd, please please feel free to. Or just raise your hand, and you can join us and ask me. So I think. Um, Yes, um, Peter, thank you. And I see in the chat, um, Peter Shea, who is the co-editor of the book that we have um, written the chapter for, had, had given the perfect answer. So social media um, is one way that um, we can all share information about some of these great resources that are available for education. Um, Peter runs a fabulous Facebook group for instructional designers. Anybody that has an interest in um, instructional needs, I would recommend looking at, um, for that Facebook group and joining it. A lot of really great um, stuff comes through there constantly, including um, tool, you know, I, I constantly am mining that. And when there's good things that are shared, I will often be a contributor to the MOOC as well and just take them from uh, the Facebook group and share into the wiki. Um, so that's one way. Um, the reach of the MTech project is enhanced greatly through the Coursera platform. So um, SUNY is one of the institutional partners with Coursera. And um, I'm kind of amazed at the reach that they are able to get. Our course um, has more than 25,000 people that have enrolled. And that's many, many more students than any of us would be able to teach in our lifetime. Can you just repeat the number again so everyone can hear that? Uh, more than 25,000 enrollments in three years. So if, if, if the question I was going to ask, and this is just a kind of semi-sarcastic question, is if MOOCs are dead, how did you manage to teach 25,000 students? 
MOOCs are not dead. <laughs> Um, I think the term is um, maybe not as favored as it used to be in one of the earlier years. MOOC was the word of the year. Um, but I see a lot of a um, lot of really relevant um, MOOCs that are out there. And especially, I think, even with the, um, the pandemic, it has given them more life. Um, people are learning more and digging into improving themselves with some of the extra time that they have on their hands. And particularly to that point, you know, I think there are so many new courses being put out that you can integrate into your own course um, and even pull some content in or learn something that you maybe might not be an expert in. Um, there are many teach outs that are being put out by organizations. Um, I myself love looking at all the new offerings um, every Day, it seems like I'm getting uh, information from Coursera about new MOOCs that are out there. Of course, there's other platforms, but it's a great way to even help your students, if, if you're in a faculty position, continue to learn after the semester. And so it's a, it's a nice way for some of that continuity of education to occur, uh, which we all hope occurs during the summer months, but maybe doesn't. And, and Jessica's being a little modest. She didn't give a plug to the new MOOC that she has just launched, um, which is a MOOC that is shared among a number of the SUNY research centers. And um, it, Jessica's um, focus is on public health. Thank you for sharing the, the link in the chat, Jessica, for that. I'm looking forward to enrolling. In, I've already enrolled. I'm looking forward to get, getting more time to participate. A MOOC about uh, communication and leadership in public health? This sounds mandatory right now. Um, thank you uh, for Jessica for doing that. Um, we had a couple of really quick questions at camp uh, in uh, that I wanted to share. Uh, Tara asks, uh, "How do we access the wiki?" Tara, good question. Uh, bottom of the screen, bottom left, there are two tan or yellow colored uh, boxes. Uh, the top one is called M Tech MOOC, and if you press that, up will be the uh, the wiki there. Um, and then, um, and then Mike Eisenberg, who's an emeritus dean asks a very serious question. Out of that 25,000 students have taken them, how many have completed? That's a good question also. We are getting close to 1,000. So although there's a big gap in the number who have enrolled versus the number who have completed, that's kind of a common thing with MOOCs. And um, as long as the learners are coming to the MOOC and seeking the um, the information that they want, um, that's great. We don't want to gauge the quality of a MOOC on its uh, completion rates. Um, but I think Dottie, thank you for um, being here, one of our MOOC participants. In the chat, she had mentioned that, um, you know, she still goes back to the MTech Wiki. And we see that also, in, even though she's one of the completers, um, we still see people coming back to the Wiki afterwards. It's a resource that once you are exposed to it and how you can um, find the technologies by looking up, you know, what is your learning objective? What are you trying to achieve? And it will then start narrowing down for you the tools. So it's a great place um, to put, uh, to, to find things that are useful. Speaking of finding things, I'd like to find uh, some more people and I'd like to bring up a couple more of the guests. So Sherry uh, and Jessica, let me just kind of knock you off the stage for a second. Imagine a big, you know, vaudeville hook is uh, knocking you off, uh, but they're still there, so we can bring them up as needed. Um, but I wanted to make sure that we can hear from a few others. So let me just begin by grabbing uh, uh, Gina Sickley uh, out in um, close to my old stomping grounds when I was a kid. Uh, Gina is an assistant professor. Uh, hello, Gina. Hi, it's nice to see you all. Good to see you. Um, and, and you're in Long Island right now, right? Yes, yes, and it, it is sunny here today. <laughs> Well, you know the drill by now. When I ask people to introduce themselves, I say, what are you going to be working on for the next year? So tell us. What are you working on? So I'm, you know, I intend to stay involved with MTech MOOC, and I'm interested in, you know, increasing funding opportunities through various grants. Uh, but personally, uh, I'm working on a book about lurker literacies and how the phenomenon of being just here for the comments can be a valuable and participatory social media act. And it's an extension of my dissertation work on uh, lurker literacies in Facebook groups, in neighborhood Facebook groups. Very good. Very good. That sounds very important. Um, 
know, especially since uh, so many people learn in so many ways. Yeah, the interesting thing is that everybody's a lurker. When you look at these long-term studies, more people are reading than commenting. So trying to understand why we comment when and when we don't comment, what we actually do and the things that can be very helpful to our communities when we engage in something called participatory restraint, when we don't comment. <laughs> participatory restraint. Yeah. Well, um, so it, for all of you, let that be a lesson. Be unrestrained. We want your questions, but seriously, we're also welcome for everyone who wants to soak it all up and learn from everybody here. Um, thank you, Gina. Good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, let me add to this. Uh, your colleague, Rachel Rigolino. Let's see. Hello, Rachel. Hello, everyone. Uh, so I'm normally uh, in New Paltz, New York, in the lovely Hudson Valley, but I'm down here in Dover, Delaware right now. So for the summer. Well, that's that's terrible. But um, it's no. horrible. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm glad to see you here. I'm glad to see you. So, so if you're going to be down there for the summer, what are you going to be working on? Well, that's funny. I was trying to think. I I think I'm kind of one of these people that picks up all these different little projects. But my my main focus this summer there are two things. I received a sure grant. I'm working with some students on developing an online uh, tutor training program. I'm a, a developmental, I teach developmental English. Uh, but another big thing I'm working on, and it's very apropos, I'm working on a course for the United States Air Force uh, through my campus, and it's an asynchronous course. But I think where MTech MOOC kind of fits in with another branch of what I, I'm focused on is faculty development. Um, I'm a SUNY online ambassador. And on my campus, I, you know, put the MTech MOOC out there, you know, for our faculty because they need these skills, they want these skills, but, you know, it's not always easy to stay up to date with, you know, cool new tools that are out there. That's quite true. Well, thank you for doing that. Um, and uh, oh, quick question for the three of you, just to make sure. Uh, we have a question that came out on Twitter from down the Soto. Who wants to know what M stands for? And I said emerging. Am I right, or is it this? Yes, and actually, um, a lot of people might even interpret when we say M Tech MOOC, they might spell it M Tech oh. instead of E M. And so it's maybe a design flaw in our name. People then they're looking at it in the alphabet under the M's. It's EM for Emerging Tech MOOC. So we don't say dial <laughs> M for M Tech, but instead it's like okay. um, Dan also thought that uh, his guess was that it was actually M dash. Um, so that's, uh, we had to make sure that the geek uh, quotient is represented uh, here today. Mm -hmm. Well, let me, we have more questions that are coming in and more people are, uh, are raising their hands, but I want to make sure that we have still one other person here who is not left out of this conversation. And uh, this is uh, Jennifer Herman. So let's bring her up. And we have Jennifer. Hello. Hello. And how are you doing? Good. I'm coming from Waltham, Massachusetts. So the Northeast is pretty covered from uh, you know, Delaware to New York to Massachusetts. Yeah. Um, what are you going to be working on? Um, so I bring a little bit of a different lens. So my role is I direct a teaching center on my campus. And something that we're really starting to talk about on the Simmons University campus uh, where I am is thinking about what's happened over the last year with the pandemic and recognizing that a lot of people have developed some great skills, learned some new tools, tried some new techniques, and thinking forward as we move a lot of those classes back to in-person, what lessons learned can we bring forward and how can we make the best of this for our students? So a lot of my focus is on programming to help support that reflection. Well, that's fascinating to see. Um, do, you, do you think, uh, what, what are some of the, uh, first lessons that you've picked up from this? Uh, what are some of the new habits do you think that faculty will bring to the face-to-face -face classroom? Well, we actually did something similar back in January. We had a reflection session that we called What Went Well. 
And we just had people gather together on Zoom and reflect on the positive from the previous semester. And of course, we planted a few folks to get the conversation started. So that was really helpful. Um, and I think a few themes. Uh, one is that people shared that online learning was different when they, what, than what they expected. And so once they got into it, they realized that there are ways that you can really promote engagement that you can't in an in-person class. And I've heard a lot of folks express an interest in having some sort of flipped or blended model on the other side of this. So perhaps um, having students watch a video instead of do a reading before class. So I'm very curious now that we're starting to move toward in person, um, what folks will say. Very good. This is important work. And I may just steal that thing for another session for ourselves. Um, but you have a, a Mark Friedenberg says hi. He's a neighbor at Bentley University. Oh, wonderful. So uh, again, friends, this is a, a place for all of you to uh, ask your questions. Um, and we have now all six of our um, of our wonderful panelists deployed. Um, so please don't be shy with your questions. Don't restrain yourselves too much. Um, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, we have uh, uh, Mathieu asked another question, which is a really solid one, too. Uh, this has to do with data. Uh, besides the list of tools, do you also have some assessment tools or data points for data privacy, standards compliance, accessibility, and so forth? Um, yes, um, very good question. So there are yeah, another one of the categories on the MTech site is accessibility. And the MOOC has, um, it's broken down into five different modules. The very first module is probably the most important module. Mm. And in there, we talk about lifelong learning and some of the um, ideas and knowledge that you need to have in order to be a successful lifelong learner. Accessibility is part of that information literacy, um, your digital footprint, um, that's all kind of uh, brought up in that first module to kind of guide you through when you go through the other modules, exploring more of the tools. But another, um, that theme that you just mentioned, accessibility and also the privacy aspects, that is hopefully what will drive our next grant project that we are hoping to get into. Um, we've uh, all, we've, um, uh, appreciated the web 2.0 scorecard that was developed by a colleague, Wendy Torres, and that's a resource on our MOOC. And we've presented on that um, idea in a number of different conferences, how you know some of the tools help you become more accessible and how to you know make sure that you add captions to your videos and things of that nature. Um, so it's a very important part, but we are kind of refining that checklist and building our own that also includes the security privacy and have plans over the summer to try to work with some students to push that forward even even further. Very nice, very nice. Great question, with you. Um, and uh, we also have a quick comment from uh, Corinne Shug, I believe, a Swarthmore, who says that she's excited to hear the trend towards being flipped and being considered, thinking this approach is particularly helpful for all students, especially those who might have disabilities. Um, and then you have um, uh, a note from uh, Dottie, one of your MTech MOOC uh, veterans, who says she taught virtual grade pre-K through 12 since August, now hybrid, and teaching in person online at the same time. Somewhat challenging when you're at a different school site with different setup for each assignment. And I can definitely see that. Uh, we also have another questioner. We have Peggy Mackey, who wants to join us on stage. Let's see if we can uh, have her join us. And we have, there she is. <laughs> Um, del delighted to be with this group of people. This was an extraordinary important chapter uh, in the book, which really was designed to help people navigate this evolving landscape of emerging technologies. It's really difficult to get your arms around them. So we need opportunities like this. And what impresses me so much about both the MOOC and the Wiki is that these uh, represent what Pansky Brock refers to as untethered professional development mm. opportunities, which means that we all can't be at a, a designated time or place for professional development, but now we have the opportunity 
to do it in our own time, but most importantly, to engage with other colleagues, mm -hmm. to learn from them, ask questions, and learn about their particular experiences. And, and uh, one of the other things that she says is the best way to learn about digital options is to do them online. And that's exactly what uh, both the MOOC and the Wiki enable us to do. So my congratulations to all of them. <laughs> Thank you, Penny. And, and Peggy, you bring up some, some really great points. Um, I think part of the inspiration for the development of the MOOC was um, at the University of Buffalo, there was a single instructional designer um, that was centralized in our teaching center to thousands of faculty. And so it was like, how do you reach these faculty that are in different parts of the city and different parts of the day? And so that was kind of part of our inspiration and um, there was a project that we had in place of, for about five years before mtech called the tools of engagement project mm -hmm. and we learned a lot there and hopefully we tried to fix some of the things that we learned when we went into the mooc but through the tools of engagement project we did some qualitative re research on the reflections that participants wrote about their experiences and they definitely felt that the number one thing that they learned the best from was from each other. Just Absolutely. reading somebody's reflection. This is what I explored. Here's how I used it in my class. And here's what I might do differently next time. That's the best learning opportunity that people have in this kind of experience. So, right sure. on. so this broadens the opportunity to make these extraordinary connections with people uh, on a continual basis and an, on an as needed basis. And that's really um, incredible. That's actually what's happening in the workplace is people are having to learn online new capabilities um, in the moment. So we should be doing it in higher ed as well. Yes. I'd also like to address, I think um, Matthew's got another point in the chat. Um, he said that he's gotten burnt with a cool tool disappearing overnight. And I think that's another lesson that we learned that we're trying to um, address. So we do not focus on, you know, here's a tool, learn exactly where to click. It's like, here's some tools, learn the concepts behind what in general is that tool? Is it a concept map? Is it a wiki? Is it a blog? Not here's blogger and here's, you know, that's the blog platform. If it goes away, I'm going to cry. It's like understand the principles. Yeah. And when they do go away, which they do often, be able to have a comfort level of being able to go out, find what you need, what fills your need, mm -hmm. and then learn from that and then use that tool because they do go away. They certainly do. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for grabbing that question. And as usual, Mathieu asked a good question. And uh, I really appreciate that stance because I've, I've been through the experience myself. I think, in fact, many of us probably have as well. Um, Peter Shea adds, we need more tools to generate content not tied to a specific tool and gives the example of uh, MP3. Um, now, uh, Peggy, I'm going to keep you on stage just for a minute more because uh, mm -hmm. um, because you may want to dive into this one as well. Uh, this is a question from um, uh, Dean Mike Eisenberg, uh, who asks about libraries. What role do libraries and librarians play in your situations? And I'm assuming that Mike means in terms of supporting and working in MTech. Well, it seems to me when we are designing courses, they, their recommendations or how we integrate with them is significantly important. And, and it's very, so we need to be connecting with them as we design the specific courses that we're working with. Um, it's sort of traditionally been the problem with LMSs that the librarians were sort of kept on the sidelines all the time. And yet they're a significant component of the activities and the resources that we use. So it seems to me what they could learn from this could then travel into working with faculty as they design courses. I mean, they probably know some already, but they may be another source for saying, gee, have you thought about this as a possibility for students learning a little bit more about X, you know, this simulation or this mm -hmm. 3D tool that you could use as well? That's a great answer. Thank you, Peggy. Uh, Robin and uh, Rachel, Jennifer, Gina, would you like to add to that? I think um, I'd like to add a little bit that um, libraries uh, have been a, um, a field that are constantly evolving 
and they are not your traditional library that only is, you know, dealing with content and books. So libraries are continually expanding and especially in academic libraries, partnering with faculty and helping them to um, develop and um, curate and define um, both content and activities to engage students. And even public libraries are using many opportunities to help mm -hmm. increase both um, digital information and uh, you know any type of literacy. Um, mm -hmm. So there's all kinds of opportunities for libraries for sure. Um, and I would just add, of course, with the uh, OER, uh, you know, ongoing revolution. Those librarians at our, you know, at our campus are curating open educational mm -hmm. resources. They are key and we really need to fund them. But anyway. <laughs> okay. Very good, okay. very good. Just as a meta note, if, if you're new to the forum, we've, we've, uh, we're big time fans of libraries here. Uh, we've done sessions from inside libraries. We've covered a lot of the wonderful librarians and library scholars. Uh, and we're also big uh, open boosters. So. Uh, Mike, great question, great question, thank you. Um, now I'm going to uh, rearrange the deck chair a little bit here. Um, and uh, um, let's see, Peggy, I'll, I'll give you a, a break this time. Um, and I want to bring back, I want to bring up uh, one of the previous um, uh, panelists here um, who bring up uh, Sherry. And this is a question for, uh, for you, Sherry, as well as for uh, uh, Robin. And because this question is so exciting, I'm actually going to uh, do this in an exciting visual display. So I get to be like this. Um, the question is, a lot of MOOCs, they're usually designed, they're usually built on one person, you know, one main instructor, um, and then there's a, a production, the production team behind the scenes at you know, EDX or Coursera or Udemy or whatever. But what I'm seeing here is something very, very different. Um, this seems like a like a pirate crew. Um, this is a... An, a how did you how did you make this happen? How did you get together all these wonderful people to do all this work? Um, Sheree <laughs> yeah, Shri is definitely the 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 right hand person to the to the team, and um, she has kind of been by my side every step of the way. But as you might have noticed, um, it was not a one person or a two person or a six person. It's, you know, we've had, I believe, there's probably close to 100 people throughout the SUNY system that have helped contribute to the development of the MOOC. Um, we've had faculty, we have, um, you know, just in the videos that we share through the, through the MOOC, students are represented, um, staff are represented, and, um, you know, many people have had their hands in there in some way or another. And Brian, I think we share a, a trait. Um, you often introduce yourself as the chief cat herder, well, I think that's something that I do pretty well too. I, I'm able to kind of bring together the people. I often say that um, I describe myself as a learner and a connector of people and ideas. And um, that's I think how this came together. And like we tried hard when we got people to do our videos or to you know, anytime somebody was working there, we tried to get different universities. So we, we weren't, it's not all Binghamton and Buffalo. It's mm -hmm. across the SUNY system. We thought of who do we know that's an expert in a particular area or have, who has a driving passion in a particular area. And we tried to get them to be our speaker for those different sections. So we, we tried to give people a lot of different, a lot of different viewpoints. I think we also need to give some credit to um, one of our early SUNY chancellors, uh, Dr. Nancy Zimfer. And um, so she had, um, SUNY has 64 different campuses across the state of New York. And um, she had a term that she called systemness. Yeah. So instead of Buffalo doing something and then Binghamton doing that same thing and then New Paltz doing that same thing, how can we work together to create a collaborative thing? And that's what we're doing here. Yeah, she had, that had a lot of promise and uh, and some good stuff came out of that. Um, mm -hmm. so I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear you uh, uh, mention that because um, that was, I thought, really, really important. Um, and uh, I, I, I have to ask, how do you how do you keep it going? I mean, this is this is three years. This is people spread out over a pretty distributed set of institutions and geographies. 
I mean, do you just all live on a Slack channel, or are you are are you just uh, zooming in and out, or are you um, just how how do you structure this? Uh, we do meet through Zoom. We still use the e old fashioned email. Um, we have not yet started a ch Slack channel. Um, and um, I think it's just, you know, as different projects come up, we'll pull together different teams. And um, many times there's just uh, people that come forward and say, I want to get, get involved. And then we'll talk and figure out ways that they can get involved. That's terrific. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you for answering that question. Um, it, Mathieu Plurid uh, uh, had an interesting comment about uh, uh, about the term MOOC, and I'm gonna and he, there's a cartoon that he, he shared. I'm gonna bring this up at the in just a few minutes on the screen for everybody. Um, but uh, thank you for sharing that. I, I think this is very for me personally very inspirational uh, to see so much uh, good cat herding being done, um, and uh, if this is done in such a lowercase d democratic way. Um, uh, Rachel asks, uh, how many campuses are represented in the MOOC, do you think? Um, I think we might have, um, you know, as far as participants, I think we might have hit all 64. Wow, in the in the SUNY system? Yeah. Wow. I, think, you know, I haven't done the research, but I'm guessing, you know, we've, um, I'm thinking that we've maybe hit all campuses in some way. Wow. And as far well as the campuses that are involved, there's been around a dozen, and then, you know, they come and go, though. So we might be working with one dozen at one point, and then maybe it changes or we split off, and we're not working with that many. But and at one point, um, with the Tools of Engagement Project, we had kind of more of a membership model where a campus had to kind of purchase membership. Um, and that, you know, we had maybe about um, almost more than half of the SUNY campuses in as members at one time. Well, that's really good. Mm -hmm. really and as far as the, the idea about sustainability, one thing that a MOOC is kind of designed to do is to offer instruction at scale, to be self, um, self running. And so, although we do try to communicate in the discussion forums to try to, um, and through social media, to yeah. try to encourage people to dig deeper when they are doing their reflections, um, there is, um, you know, definitely the, um, uh, there is the opportunity once somebody completes the MOOC to become an MTech fellow. And what that just means is that once you complete the MOOC, we ask you to be a mentor in the community. And once you have shown that you have provided support to at least uh, one person in each of the modules, we then will designate you as a fellow. So they, there's many, and I, I think uh, Donnie's one of our fellows, and there's others that are on the call I've seen. Um, so there's a number that, again, when time permits, they go in and they kind of try to nurture that community. As I'm sure you're aware, Brian, community just doesn't happen. It needs to be nurtured. It does. It does. That's why I like the, the gardening metaphor. Uh, I'm conscious of time, and we've got about four minutes left, which is criminal. Um, but I, I'm going to take uh, the moderator's uh, prerogative and ask you all a question, um, which is, where does this where does this go in the future? Where does this go five or ten years out? And you've you've mentioned uh, looking for partners um, and and trying to become more sustainable, which is crucial. Um, do you want to say more about that, or would you like to talk more about, say, more emerging technologies that you would like to include as curriculum? or that you'd like to use as teaching technologies or any other changes? Um, I think I would like to talk a little bit more about um, how people might be able to come become a partner. Um, we just have a couple minutes left. So if you do go to the MTech site, go to the um, home menu and there is a section of um, how you can help. And in that um, page, there's a number of ways that you can um, contribute or ways that you can get in touch with us so that we can talk and brainstorm ideas that maybe we haven't even thought of and how we can partner together to kind of, you know, keep it going. And, and the, the idea of making it a wiki was purposefully done because of those tools go, continually go away. When they fall out of favor, we'll remove them and new tools come out, they get added. That's good to say. And resources too. I always forget the resources. There's about two thirds of the items on the wiki about um, our tools, and then another third are OER catalogs, 
how to, you know, uh, tutorials, um, many different things. Well, thank you for, for answering that. Uh, I, I'd, I'd like to share this cartoon that uh, uh, that Mathieu uh, brought forward. Let me make sure I've got the right version of this. Let's see if I've got it. Uh, there we go. Um, and he wanted us to think of MOOCs as a boundary object. Um, that is one that uh, crosses over a whole bunch of different meanings. And you can see here that for every letter involved, there are different questions. Is it free of charge? Is it affordable? Does it have start end dates? Is it self-paced? Uh, and then, of course, we have the X and C, in which case the uh, X MOOCs uh, are focused on, you know, are they focused on scalability? Are the C MOOCs more focused on communities and, uh, and connections? Uh, so I, I did want to uh, uh, thank um, thank you for sharing that. Uh, Doc Waters, which uh, which link are you looking for? Uh, for the wiki or for something else? Just let us know on this show. Uh, Doc, that's in the bottom left of the screen here. Let me just uh, make sure you can all see this clearly. In the very bottom left of the screen, you should see two uh, yellow or tan uh, boxes. Uh, the top one there um, is the uh, uh, MTech group. And of course, before I can even finish seeing that, Robin is linked directly into the chat. Well, um, I have to say, it, it's been absolutely inspirational and very practical to learn from all of you uh, and all of these experiences. Um, how can we best keep up with the uh, MTech MOOC project as a whole? I would say enroll. <laughs> so the best way to keep up is to go to the um, to the website that Brian has shared and I've shared in the chat and enroll. There's no cost to anybody to enroll. Um, there are many um, opportunities to get the free Coursera certificate and badge, and you can find that out about through the um, you know through the MTEC website. Very good. And um, that's probably the best way. We are also we have a Facebook group that um, we're trying to, you know, get that built, but it's, um, you know, kind of slow right now. And we do share through LinkedIn quite a bit as well. Understood. Understood. That's great. Well, let me thank all of you. Let me thank all six of you uh, for coming today, for sharing your experience and thoughts. Um, please keep going. This is, a, this is an unusual and very fine project, and we're glad to have connected with you today. Thank you very much, Brian, for having us. We're, we're very grateful for the opportunity to talk and share. My pleasure, my pleasure. But don't go away, everybody. Uh, we need to point out where we're headed in the, uh, uh, the next few weeks. Um, and um, the uh, I want to touch on a few different topics before we go. Uh, one is, again, just where we're headed. We have a whole bunch of topics coming up over the next few months. Next week, we're looking at federal policy changes. So if you're interested in that, uh, if there's anything in particular that you'd like us to look into, uh, please let me know. Uh, we'd be happy to set up our speaker for that. Uh, we're also changing a bit of uh, how we handle conversations between sessions. Right now, we're focusing primarily on Twitter. Just make sure that you use the hashtag FTTE. And there you can see my handle as well as the uh, Shindig handle. And you can also see uh, much more on the blog as well. Um, if you'd like to uh, look back into the past, look at some of our sessions on MOOCs, uh, or on instructional design, on professional development, and so on, just head back to timeurl.com slash ftfarchive. We have a whole bunch of sessions there to look at. As well, please subscribe. Uh, we'd really appreciate that. Uh, on top of that, thank you all for the really great questions. Uh, this is a fantastic project. I'm glad that we could uh, link together with it today. Uh, thank you all for your uh, thoughts, your comments. And uh, in the meantime, please, everybody, take care. Um, be safe during this uh, extraordinary time. We'll see you next week, and we'll see you online. Bye-bye.